Welcome to the Walk On Special Sports Talk with me and the Spinnaker Sports Editor, the lovely Hall of Famer, Sean Watts. How are you doing today, John? Doing well, doing well. Went to the Nats team store yesterday, got the Nats hat, got the World Series on the side. So we're doing well today. We're doing well. It was an easy cop? Easy cop. It was actually 50% off all the World okay. Series stuff, which was oof, amazing. <laughs> but yeah. I was, I was, okay. I was uh, home, and the local minor league team by me had a sale on T-shirts. said, 2020 season is back. And I'm like, uh, come on. That's tough. How- Throw in the trash, man. Got to use it as the, uh, the wash rag when you wash your cars, you know. Just, just use that to wipe yeah. the cars down. There you go. But, man, minor league season is canceled. Yeah, that happened a few weeks ago. What are you, what are your thoughts on that? For me, kind of hit home because I had a job lined up uh, for the minor league team. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. season got canned. Um, that's actually the, for the players too. You know, I mean, there's guys oh, that yeah. even grads like Tanner Murphy. He's a Mets prospect. I talked to him. He's actually coaching like uh, kids, but you know, I think the Mets are still paying their players. But you know, like what, what those guys do? You know, during the day, do they work out? Do they work? Do they? I don't know. Yeah, they weren't getting paid much during the, the season either, you know. They're probably – they had their little signing bonus from the um, the draft, which isn't much. But, yeah, not much. They didn't get much salary, and that was a talk for debate. So, without that salary, what are they doing? Are they doing Uber driving? Are they doing, you know, Postmates delivery? I, I would love to see one of these guys, you know, see what they're actually doing, if they're just working out or stuff like that. Now, it's all – um. To Garrett Sams uh, yesterday, he is like, uh, I guess he's waiting on uh, a team to sign him because of like COVID 19, but he's been doing part time work, working with State Farm. Like, he's kind of doing different stuff just to keep himself busy. Uh, what was his degree in? It was probably like business or something. I think he was sport management, I think. Sport management, okay. State Farm, interesting. The more you know. <laughs> but, um, uh, the baseball is back. It, it's back around the corner once we post this story. But, uh, you know, John, 60 games, man. How's that going to work out this year? It's definitely more of a, like I said before this interview, I, it's more of a sprint and not a marathon. It's more you got to win those first, like, you know, 30 games, the ones that, you know, can kind of be overlooked as you can kind of make a comeback. You know, the Nats last year, they were abysmal record 19 and 31 on May. 30th, I believe, or 23rd, something like that. But they made a comeback and got that wild card spot. This year, you're 50 games in the season, 19 and 31, got 10 games left. You're not going to be able to make that comeback like some teams do. And it's going to be interesting to see what teams get off to a hot start because that'll probably set the um, postseason. So no team has gone back to back in the World Series since 1999 with the Yankees. John, you know, the, the Nats did, Nat did sign Strasburg this past offseason to lock him in to multi year deal. Uh, what would it take for the Nationals to go back to back this year? It'd take a, take a hot start. You know, they need one. Dave Martinez, he, I think his, uh, his whole philosophy of going 1 0 every, uh, every day is going to be paramount in this situation. But I also think that some teams are going to take advantage of it and, you know, go maybe go at a slower pace, like the Dodgers, who, you know, they go – last season they went ham every single day. But they didn't really need to, and they were kind of burnt out in the postseason. It felt like it, at least. But I think there's some teams are going to take advantage of this, and some teams are just going to be like, whoa, this is, going to be, this is tough. What are, what are your thoughts on the 60-game season? Um, you know, I'm actually glad we have a season to have the season period. You know, I, we had so many talks of like owners and players and disputes and want to play this many games but get paid this much. And luckily we have a 60 game season, but I think it's been one of the most unique uh, seasons to have because we've already seen position players playing different positions in practice. Like Bryce Harper was playing third base for the Phillies and the Kung Fu, the Kung Fu Panda Pablo Sandoval was pitching a couple of days ago. So he doesn't. He doesn't look too good. I saw that one picture of him. Oh boy, he's uh, hey. he's got put on the, the quarantine fifteen, maybe thirty. Yeah. but I guess it's probably one of the most unique seasons ever because we have a a six a sixty uh, player roster for each team. You have a taxi squad, so 
say that wants to get COVID nineteen, you can get a guy from your like your um your uh, training facility come replace him. Um, you know, you mentioned the Dodgers, John, and the NL West. I guess we're gonna start there for our divisions. Mm-hmm. Is it a better roster in that division than the Dodgers? I mean, the NL West. What are the teams in there? The it's, Do- it's Dodgers, Rockies, Diamondbacks, uh, Padres. Yes. Oh, and Giants. I think the Dodgers definitely have the best roster pound for pound, but I think the um, I mean, depends on how many home games the Rockies have. <laughs> but the uh, the Dodgers with the addition of Mookie Betts, we'll see how he you know transitions to that. And they kind of got rid of a few, you know, key pieces. Um, I forget if they got rid of Jock Peterson or that was just like a they they were trading they're in training to the Angels, but he didn't pass his physical, so he, they could get the, the deal done. So he's still on the Dodgers. Yeah. Um, like after not passing a physical. <laughs> oh, that's tough. But I, I like to see Mookie Betts on the Dodgers and see what he adds to, like, Cody, Cody Bellinger. There's two MVPs on the team now, basically. And, you know, but their pitching squad is kind of going to have to get better. Yeah, you got uh, Kershaw, Walker Bueller, Alex Wood. I think – I'm not sure the rest of you guys are. But your, your yeah. lineup has – yeah, Betts. I don't, I don't, yeah. Yep, yeah, Betts, Bellinger, Muncy, AJ Pollock, Justin Turner, Corey Seager. It's a pretty strong lineup. Yeah, I just – the Nats had this problem a few years ago where they had really terrible relievers, and they had – they couldn't close out games, close out close games like 2-1. And I think with Kenley Jansen, I don't know if he's still on the team, but he wasn't doing too well. I, I've watched um, some telecasts from the Rays, and Rays played the Dodgers a few times last year. And Kenley Jansen, he just he wasn't doing well in the, the later stretches of the game. So they'll have to get better at the relievers and the closers. So What about, what about you? You like uh, any other team in the NL West? You know, I think sneaky pick is the Padres. You know, they're kind of they're on the up and up. They got Machado. Um, they have a big game in front of Tachis Jr., the guy's the lightning bolt. He's a, he's a next big thing, I think. So – I'll if it's any season that they'll go deep, it's probably this one because like it's the most unpredictable. Um, they're they'll be in a couple of years, but they might make a a a, a, a big uh, jump this year. I think. I definitely think they'll they'll slide into that wild card spot if they have the the same format. But I don't think that will be great just because their pitching squad is not fantastic. You kind of need that. Um, to be a decent team in this uh, this uh, decent age of MLB, but um, I think my favorite pitching squad right now is, is definitely the Nats. You know, but that wow. could be biased. Shocker there, John Watson. Could be could be biased, but also the, the Rays are a close second. Yes, could be biased as well. Uh, so the AL West. I, I hate to say it, John, but the bad boys in H Town might be the winners that AL West this year. H Town or A Town? H Town, Houston. Houston, I forget that they're in the West. They should be in like the Central, honestly, yeah. where Houston is. But what about the Angels? Come on, man. How, how can you go against a, a rotation with Verlander, Brinky, and now a healthy Lance McCullers, and add to that the lineup that no one left? So you have Altuve there still, Correa, Springer, Bregman. Redick, um, Altuve, it's, it's, hard, it's hard not to pick them. Yeah, true. The Angels, um, I think the Angels are a sleeper pick for this season to make the playoffs at least. But um, I only say that because the Rendon's on the team and their pitching squad is hopefully getting better during this quarantine, hopefully. Um, but my dad really likes that team, and um, I think they'll do well. You know, they got the – the um, Tyler Skaggs thing, you know, they they got a little bit of motivation from that because they threw a perfect – or not a clean game, but a no-hitter mm-hmm. during that game. And they had a little bit of motivation in the end of the season. Maybe they'll translate that to the 60 games and start start hot. But we'll see. We'll see. They also got a Japanese Babe Ruth healthy now with the Angels. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Shohei. If he, start, if he pitches, how many games do I think he's going to pitch? If he pitches seven games this season. They're going to win. 
So they're gonna make a wild card. So your, your pick is the Astros or Angels for AL West? I'm going Angels. I don't think Dusty Baker is gonna lead a Houston team filled with controversy and you know to a American League title or even maybe a wild card. Maybe a wild card. What, what, let's go to the NL Central. It probably it's like a four horse race in the NL Central. You have the Cubs, the Cardinals, the Brewers, and also sneaky the Reds. And on my pay, John is the Cubs because you bring you still have Rizzo, Bryant, Baez, Contreras, so on and so forth, and Kyle Hendrick at, uh, on the mound. John, what's your pick for the NL Central? I think that's definitely the uh, one of the more um, confusing ones, just because the Reds are kind of in a in they're going up. They're increasing in you know, potential with their pitching squad being top 10 and their, their players, like their D trick. He's looking good. They did just get rid of Riasio Puig though. He's, he's on the Braves. So uh, I don't know, but um, they have Trevor Bauer pitching and um, Luis Castillo. They're, they're going to definitely be over 500. You can quote me on that. <laughs> But as for the Cubs, I mean, they're ju- they're just the Cubs. I don't know how uh, Ross is going to do in his first year as manager, but we'll see. We'll see. What about you? So, uh, I think that that's really a uh, close division. One team that's kind of the outlier is the Pirates, who are terrible. They made the dumbest trade in the past five years of baseball, trading away Chris Archer. Or they trade away Tar Glass now. Austin Meadows and top prospect Shane Baz for a watered down Chris Archer. Yeah, Chris Archer, he he's injured this season, so I don't think he's pitching. So Tyler Glass now is a hundred mile per hour missile of a beautiful hair guy. So Pirates not making it. All right. What about what about the Cubs for you? You think Cubs. the Cubs are gonna do well? Yes. You could pick any of those four teams, and they have a legit shot to win this death division, which is tough. Um, I can make case the Cardinals. Cardinals still have a solid team. Um, they did get rid of Ozuna, but um, I think that that rotation is pretty nasty still. Um, it's definitely going to be one of those four teams to win the division. Yeah, I still don't know how the Cardinals beat the Braves in that you know season series, what, what, postseason so, series. That, uh, uh, viewers, just press the skip button 10 seconds ahead, and then we'll go on to the next topic. <laughs> uh, what do we got? AL Central? I forget which teams are in that one. That's one of the weakest divisions this year, John. It really it's, is, yeah. it's, it's Twins, White Sox, Indians, Tigers, Royals. Okay, the Twins in recent years have been able to start hot, but finishing hot is probably their, their – um, their downfall there and um the white Sox, they, they're kind of cool i like the white Sox. just with tim beckham not tim beckham but uh what's his name tim tim anderson tim anderson yeah tim beckham was on the raid sorry i think he's he got like a dui or something but uh tim anderson he's bringing a new a new mojo to baseball that you know bryce harper had back in 2013 2014 and it's looking it's it's pretty fun i like it but yeah, I think the uh, the front runner for that one is definitely the Twins. Yeah, I think the um, the Indians kind of they lost their pitching because they got rid mm-hmm. of um, Trevor Bauer last year, and also um, they got Kluber this offseason to the Rangers. So kind of like they have to go back to the chalkboard and get back the rotation. The lineup is okay. I think they still have um, Jose Ramirez. Lindor for now. I said for now, I might, might trade him this year, I for think. For now, yeah. Yeah, it happened. Um, yeah, I don't think they're, they're going to be a contender in a couple of years. But I say either the Twins or the White Sox. I say the Twins because of their power. They like the, they had the most home runs last year in baseball. Um, but Nelson Cruz, who actually just went to the White Sox, actually, it's off season. But they oh. still have Sano, Kepler, Eddie Rosario, Maria Polanco. So it's still a legit squad. Yeah, I'm thinking the Twins, definitely. What do we got next? We got – oh, the, wait, are the Tigers not the division? Yes, they are. <laughs> oh, man, I feel bad for the Tigers. I feel bad for uh, Miguel Cabrera. That guy just, you know, he has not been on a great team. Here's the true question, John Watson. Miguel Cabrera has one Ross Series ring to his name. What year was it from? 
to uh, 2007? 2003. Wow. That was the Marlins against the Yankees World Series. Who won that one, the Marlins? Marlins, yeah. I didn't know he was on the team. Interesting. Yeah. He was traded like uh, 2007, I think, to the Tigers. And then the Tiger, it was, uh, it was Cabrera and Ball Sanchez. And the trade of one of the guys in that trade, too, the Florida was a uh, Cameron Maben. Mm. Yeah, I remember when uh, Verlander and Sanchez and were all, and Garrett Cole. I don't think Garrett Cole was on the team, actually. Never mind. But they were both on the same team. And Verlander was on the same team. Yeah. Scherzer. So, yeah, but you mentioned yeah, Sanchez. Stuff. Sanchez was now a, a cog in the wheel of the Nationals and the NL East, which we are next division to talk about. Now, John and I are both fans of the National East division for two different reasons. Uh, we, we can afford to listen to one more John's Nationals uh, 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 hype ups, but guess what your team, John? Guess what my team? I think. Um... I think the Braves are going to give them a good run for their money, but they haven't got that much better in the off season. Just uh, they haven't really done much pitching changes. They didn't really have to because they brought in. Um, are they still? Do they still have? Um, what was the guy they picked up like mid season? Um, uh, Dallas Keuchel. No, he's in the White Sox now. White Sox. White Sox. They're underrated. But I think the the Nats are going to be well doing well this season. They got rid of um, – who did they get rid of in the offseason? Rendon, of course, but Rendon was probably good for about one run a game, one or two, with maybe three hits a game. But um, I think they'll be well off. And uh, But the um, the Braves are definitely going to be neck and neck with the Nationals the whole season. It definitely it's, – that's been like the biggest talk is between the Braves and Nationals. The Braves mm-hmm. – they had that horrid uh, NLDS uh, series, but coming back, they did get rid of Josh Donaldson, who signed to the, the Twins this past offseason. Mm-hmm. Um, they picked up Ozuna to get, more, to get that power bat for that whole power bat right-handed batter. And then we are now in a Puig of our own. We have Yasiel mm-hmm. Puig on the Braves. Here's where it works out. You can have Acuna shift to right field. Mm-hmm. You can have um, NCR to play center field, have Puig play left field, and now we have a DH now this year for at National League. You oh, can put yeah, Ozuna a DH, but the Braves, they have a chance to be back to back to back division champions, which is we want to happen. Um, our rotation's okay. It, it's Soroka, um, Fultinevich, Max Reed, Sean Newcomb, and a new guy is Cole Hamill sat with us in the offseason, so. Cole Hamels. Man, um, he was great for the Rangers back in the day. Yeah. But then, but, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, he was good for the Phillies. Never mind. Unfortunately, uh, Marquez opted out of the season. Um, so that was a whole new roster. And Freddie Freeman got, had COVID 19, unfortunately. But if this team is healthy, I think it's in the first place of wall card for the Braves. Yeah. We'll see uh, how COVID affects the season with pro- players and stuff going in and out. And, you know, guys like Ryan Zimmerman on the Nats or, um, you know, have opted out and stuff like that. But how about the Phillies? Maybe, maybe this is the year. There's one team that I like in that division besides the Nats and the Braves. It's not the Phillies. The Marlins? What the heck? Nope, not the Marlins either. I forget what's the other team in this division. This is the team that has gotten roasted constantly. It is the New York Mets. They are actually sneaky good this year. They have uh, – <laughs> they, they, they have a top 10 rotation, top 10 lineup, and top 10 bullpen from the LB's rankings this season. You bring, you have Pete Alonzo, Jeff McNeil, Mike Conforto, Brandon Nimmo, um, Cano if he wants to play, because Cano's kind of been average, um, but the rotation is filthy. You got now DeGrom, you have um, Stroman, you have Porcello, Stephen Matz, and I think someone else. But still, that's, that team should be taken lightly on this year. What happened to Syndergaard? Is he still he's, on the team? He's, uh, he's hurt this year. Uh, I hear uh, DeGrom's day-to-day, so the Mets are back. <laughs> yes, that's the Mets back. Are, they're definitely have to – is Suspetta still on the team? Yeah, yeah, he's on the team, so. 
So if if the set if Suspedes can get back to his form that he was back when he won the home run derby over Bryce Harper, tough times, um, then they could be a good team. I mean, but they gotta start hot, and I think the Phillies could start hot. Yeah, but they the Phillies could honestly win this division. Yeah, that's, Phillies, that's a cold, that's a cold take. They still have like McCutcheon, they have Harper, they have uh, Reese Hoskins, Ramuto. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's their base? Their base for the Phils? I uh, couldn't tell you. And a shortstop is Gene Segura. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, they have an okay lineup, and if the pitching's good, they have Aaron Nola as the lead guy in the rotation. And, and they Ari- have um, Jake Arrieta. Arietta, yeah. And, but past those two, it's going to be a little tough going into you know, some of these games. I don't know how spread out the games are going to be either. Are they going to be back-to-back days, or like, are they going to Depends. I don't know. So we got the AL East mm. last. The Rays are in this division. Two of our mm. favorite teams, I guess. Mm. I don't even know. What do you think? What are you thinking for the the stacked AL East, honestly? Except for the that, Orioles, my bad. I heard that, I heard that it's, a two, it's a two-horse race effort between the Rays and the Yankees. The Red Sox, they've lost their pitching. They don't have, like, um, they have – Matt Barnes, Ryan Johnson, it's a bunch of guys like that. It's kind of like long relievers, bulk in guys. Uh, the Blue Jays, I think they're still way too young, I think. Um, I mean, you do have guys like Bichette, Guerrero, Biggio, and Guerrero Jr., but I don't think they're ready yet. Um, yeah. They do have a, a good rotation with uh, Hunjin Ryu, Tanner Roark, and three other guys. <laughs> Orioles are trash. You said Tanner Orioles. Roark. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put Tanner Roark up there anymore. Sorry. <laughs> the Orioles are bombing the barrel. Um, so at least the Rays and the Yankees. So, on paper, the Yankees have an amazing rotation, an amazing lineup, an amazing bullpen. But yeah, again, that's on paper. People can get an injury. Uh, they, they might go on a seven-game losing streak. You never know. Yeah, the I, Yankees. Yeah. What are you gonna say? I, I want the race one day at least because they have, I think, the best rotation and one of the best rotations in baseball, I think, with Wharton, Glass, Wharton Snell, and Glass now, um, Ryan Yarbrough, Yai Chirinos. I mean, that's a solid total rotation. I think that they're a very versatile team. And, uh, you know, I've been watching all these Rays you know, replays because they're always on Fox Sports Florida. Whenever my dad and I are like in the sixth inning and they're down like 6 1. We're always like, hmm, I wonder who wins this one. It's always the Rays because they wouldn't play a loss on TV. But, you know, they're a very scrappy team, and they're also a very versatile team. And I like them over the Yankees. Just the Yankees are just – they're too serious about baseball. And they they think they're going to win every single game, and then they when they lose, they lose bad. And they get into losing streaks, and they get it, you know, too – you know, they take losses too heavy. Well, you know, the Rays learn from every loss and they can bounce back in ways that no other team can. It's really interesting with that, that team. Yeah, the Yankees are probably going to try to lean on to, I think, probably uh, Garrett Cole too much, you know. he's He was the biggest acquisitionist this offseason in baseball. Mm-hmm. But one ace, one ace can only get you so far with the team. You can't rely on him for the harder wins. For sure. And they uh... – they lost CC Sabathia in the off season just because of retirement. <laughs> what, what was he doing anyways? He was just giving up five runs a game and hoping for the best. Yeah, he was but, the worst for the race. Yeah, I mean, they still have a role to Chapman, and um, I do. I was going to say that the Blue Jays do seem pretty interesting because I think that they could start hot. They could start like twenty and three, and. 23 game, you know, you get through 23 games and you only have 27 left. And then, you know, they could lose those 27 games and still be 23 and 30 with a maybe, a, you know, a postseason spot. So um, I think they're they're one of the most, I don't know, they're pitching. They got better with pitching. and They got better in all aspects in this offseason. You've seen Vlad Guerrero's um, Twitter posts. Not not his Twitter post, but other people's Twitter posts of him like hitting bombs in these uh, simulated games. And he just eats the ball like so far in ways that no no other player can. And that's what I think is fun about this team. 
I want to see hopefully they uh, mic the players up this year. Hopefully, if they can put microphones in the players. That'd be awesome. Yeah, they tried to do that with golf in that first tournament, but only one player would do it. Mm-hmm. It was um, Ricky Fowler. So, and Brooks Kepka was like, "Why mic up the players? I don't want you to hear stuff that's going on in my, you know, caddy." And I was like, "Yeah, that's probably true." But I, I liked what they did in spring training. I think it was two years ago where they mic'd up some of the players, like um, what was Anthony Rizzo on the the Cubs. Yeah. And he was fun to he was fun to watch. He's like. I think one of the analysts was like, what are you bringing to the plate? And he was like, I don't know. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> but, yeah, who who's your World Series pick, I guess? Well, call me biased, John Watson, but when I see the Rays and the Braves, duke it out in the World Series. That would be fun. Would be fun. Depending on what the format is with this next postseason, because I don't know the format. I don't think they've announced it yet. But – it could be a weird team like the um, – it could be a weird team like the Angels, honestly. Mm-hmm. You know, the Nats won it last year basically because they got hot later in the season, in the second half of the season, and they rode that into the postseason, and they just said, hey, we, we can't, you know, we can't lose. And, you know, it could be a team like that who gets hot, you know, in the second tw- uh, 30 games of the season. I don't know. It'll be a very intriguing season, and I'm glad that, you know, at least we're having some baseball play this season. Exactly. Baseball's back, and the walk-ups will continue to be back every week on ESPNaker.com. Mm-hmm. Shameless plug. Not so shameless. It's Bruce Spinnaker. Yep. But for, for our John Watson, Drake Donnelly, for watching the show, and we'll see you next time.